Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. The one, the only Mr. Frankie Benali, drummer extraordinaire, and of course the band leader of Quiet Riot. Frankie, how you doing today? Good, man. Always happy to uh, chat with the Metal Voice, uh, which is uh, Jimmy K. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, I, mean, I, I'm gonna, I, I know about your, your, your health issues. I don't want to pry. I don't want to get into that. I, I understand that's a private matter. But I just want to, I had a little statement I wanted to tell you uh, beforehand that I've been a Choir Riot fan since you guys first started. I've been following your career throughout all the music that you've done over the years. It broke my heart uh, to hear this yesterday. But, but I am sending my prayers to you, my positive vibes to you, and I'm going to ask all my followers and friends to send all their positive vibes and prayers to you so you can get through this, my friend. Well, I truly appreciate that. I appreciate you uh, and all your listeners, um, and especially it's, it's been overwhelming, um, the amount of, of love and prayers and support that... Uh, that everyone has shared on my Facebook page and via text messages, uh, emails, private messages, and everything. Uh, like I said, I'm, in, I'm incredibly uh, fortunate and incredibly grateful to have this much support uh, from fans and friends. So thank you for that. No problem, my friend. Uh, Hollywood Cowboys, uh, November yep. 8th. Also a new music video, In the Blood, coming out, I think it's tomorrow, right? It's premiering tomorrow. Uh, uh, no, it's the 25th on Friday. Oh, the 25th. I stand correct. Correct. Um, and, and I will ask you one health question as it relates to the album, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, of course. You were, you were diagnosed with the pancreatic cancer, I, I believe in April. And, and funny thing is I actually spoke to you last time we spoke was in March. So that was right. one month before. Mm -hmm. How did the, the I, I mean, now you're, you're, you're going through this health scare at the same time as you're, I'm assuming, writing an album, putting it together. I mean, how did the artist, and as, as an artist, right, there is pain and suffering and happiness that goes into the music. How was that for you in making this album? How did the two connect? Well, you know, the album was already, was already recorded. Um, and uh, two days after um, I had my diagnosis, um, I was scheduled to uh, start mixing that record with uh, with our engineer Neil Citron, um, and two days after the diagnosis, I went right in, jumped right in, and started mixing the record. I didn't let you know that situation uh, as as dire as the prognosis was at the time um, stop me. Um, and to give you an idea of of my mindset and my strength is that two days after I did one of the rounds of chemo, uh, I was on the on a Western set, you know, in, in the <laughs> yeah. desert, really hot, in wardrobe for 12 hours. Uh, and a month later, uh, three days after another round of chemo, um, I was on, on the set for the uh, final day of shooting at a different location. Um, so I just, I just kept moving forward as business was usual. Unfortunately, uh, you know, my, my doctors uh, uh, were very adamant uh, to make sure that I wasn't flying to dates. Uh, and that's one of the reasons uh, that I wasn't able to, or the major reason why I was not able to do the shows uh, with Quiet Riot. You did the right thing uh, health-wise. Well, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm back in the saddle again. I'm, uh, I'm going to play this, uh, this Saturday uh, with the band The Whiskey, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Perfect, perfect. In terms of songwriting, so I read somewhere online you had a whole skew of songwriters on this album. Um, care to comment on, you know, on their contributions? Uh, yeah, what happened with the situation is that uh, uh, Neil Citron and I wrote the music um, to all the songs, and I sent, uh, I sent demos uh, to our uh, previous singer, uh, James, and... And he found comfort zone on five of the songs, but the other seven, uh, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't really either into it or, or comfortable with the songs. Um, so rather than get bogged down, uh, I reached out, first of all, I reached out to Jacob Button, um, who's an incredible 
um, singer and songwriter. Um, and he actually wrote the lyrics and melodies to Don't Call It Love in the Blood, which is the video song, Heartbreak City and Devil That You Know. Um, and oddly enough, those four tracks were were the tracks that I had in mind to open up the record, and, and of course they have. Um, and then there were a couple of songs, um, the titles uh, Change or Die and Insanity were a little different than, than what you, know, you might consider the norm for Quiet Riot, and they were a little heavier. So I immediately turned to another friend, Neil Turbin, yeah, and Neil. he wrote the lyrics and background. Uh, uh, he wrote the lyrics and melodies and, um, for Change or Die and Insanity. And then there's, uh, there's an odd track on there, which is uh, a, a blues-based track um, that's not like Led Zeppelin blues, but I, I view it as more like a Robert Plant uh, solo kind of blues. And uh, the first person that came to mind is another really talented guy, August Young. Mm -hmm. uh, who wrote the lyrics and melodies to that? And um, he's one of my uh, fellow bandmates in the in the Jimmy Sakurai, Mr. Jimmy band. Um, so he wrote that to uh, um, "Don't Roll On." Uh, so those worked out really, really, really well for us. And uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm really happy with their contributions. They're they're great songwriters. They're great people, and they also did background vocals to the tracks that uh, that they wrote. Uh, and I then sent those demos with their vocals and lyrics and melodies uh, over to James, and then he basically copied that. Uh, and, you know, those songs, uh, this, those seven songs were now done completing the record. You, you know, it's interesting, because last time we spoke when we were talking about uh, Live in Milan, I asked you about the musical dire direction on this new album, and it's bang on what you said. This is probably the most diverse Quiet Riot album I've ever heard. And, 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 and you yeah. nailed it. Yeah, you know, I I mean I wanted to I wanted to obviously, you know, keep keep that thread of of the choir ride sound uh with all the tracks, but you know, I wanted to to delve into a couple of, you know, deeper areas that uh that you know, people aren't used to hearing from choir ride and again, I'm very happy with the uh with the way the record turned out. A song like Roll On, I was completely blown away by James's delivery on this. This is like the and for I guess people haven't heard this yet, but it's it's a blues oriented song like you mentioned. But holy macar macaroni, this this guy like kicks into gear on this song. This is a completely different yeah. side to him. Yeah, but but that's because uh, you know when he first heard the song, um, he he wasn't he wasn't he couldn't come up with something that would work for the song. So um, as well as he sang the song, you have to really give uh, for that particular song. You have to give credit to August Young. Because uh, the demos that I sent him, uh, that I sent to James uh, with August singing, basically gave him the exact blueprint of what he needed to do. So no offense or disrespect to James, but <laughs> okay. he didn't really add anything to the song. He basically just followed um, the blueprint that was, uh, that was sent to him. And another sizzler is Insanity. Wow, man. And Was that Neil's you said? What's that? Oh, insanity. yeah, that's Neil Turbin on uh, Change of Die and uh, and Insanity. Yeah, I wanted, you know, we hadn't done we hadn't done a a uh, for lack of a better term a traditional choir ride double bass drum song uh, in you know probably twenty years at least, and uh, mm -hmm. I thought it was time to uh, to re inject that into the uh, choir riot um, discography. These are cookers, and then what I really enjoyed was the the devil that you know. It's got a deep purple kind of vibe to it. Especially yeah, in, in the I, beginning. I hear, I hear that. I hear that as well. Yeah, and uh, and again, Jacob Bunn just did a phenomenal job. I mean, he's a professional songwriter, and uh, he's my favorite songwriter. So yeah, yeah. W was there any song there that sort of touched on your life on a personal level? No, I don't think so. I mean, everything with me, you know. Uh, and even though the new record uh, won't be out until November 8th, um, I've already started writing material for a future Choir Ride record, and I've actually laid down a couple of drum tracks. Um, I just, I just don't premeditate it or try to try to be a this or that, or try to copy anything that's going on now, or try to copy anything that Choir Ride has done in the past. I just sit down and start writing, uh, and uh, and Neil is instrumental. Um, in the writing process, and we've got a really great partnership in that regard. 
You know, I just want to tell everybody once again, this is a very diverse album. You're getting everything from blues to hard rock to uh, darker minor key stuff, especially on Change or Die. You're getting a, a, a huge array of musical, uh, just musical everything. I, it, and it's really cool to see that you've really stretched out. This album is, 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 is far exceeded my expectations in terms of uh, quality, in terms of craftsmanship. Well, that makes me very happy because that means that uh, that we did our job well. Yeah, and, and and here's a little bit of a controversy: the album cover. I kind of like mm -hmm. it. It's got a it's got a comic book kind of feel, which I always loved. Uh, you know, metal bands usually have that kind of stuff. I mean, what kind of feedback have you been getting on the album cover? Well, it's really interesting because some of the some of the hardcore metal fans uh, look at the album cover and and they they sort of don't get it or understand. Uh, they expect that because Choir Ride is still considered a metal band, that the cover should be, you know, some gothic, you know, heavy metal looking cover, uh, which would really not have much to do with, uh, with the album and the sentiments. Um, and, it, and it really is based more on, uh, on 60s um, spaghetti yeah. western movie right. poster kind of artwork. Uh, which is going to be reflected in the uh, in the blood video. So, what is a Hollywood cowboy, anyways? Well, you know, I think you know when you look back, and uh, I don't know if you've seen the artwork for the cover, but if uh, for the album rather, but if if you think back, most American kids grew up watching you know, cowboy movies and shows like Gunsmoke and all of that, mm -hmm. and you'd be hard pressed to find. Um, somebody from our you know age or from our era that doesn't have a picture somewhere in a photo album of them you know with a cowboy hat and uh, and yeah. six guns uh and uh, that was the case with all of the guys in uh, in Quiet Riot um so it's kind of reflective of of our generation and growing up you know in the in the western americana sort of um um history yeah, I used to have, a, you know, a cap guns. Remember cap guns? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just we were running around the streets, just firing off those little cap guns all day long. Oh, listen, I remember as a kid, you know, going to Central Park with my parents on uh, on a Sunday after church, and I'd be completely geared up in, <laughs> uh, in Western gear with my, with my cap Winchester <laughs> rifle, uh, scaring the hell out of every pigeon in New York City. <laughs> what is your favorite album? Favorite album? I think it has to be Metal Health because, you know, that was uh, that was uh, a very important album to us even before even before the record was released, and uh, and obviously you know we we got great success with it. Uh, but that's that's to me that's the most important album in the catalog. Um, I like all the albums, but I like some of the some of the albums that may have not gotten the attention they deserve because of what was going on in the 90s, uh, particularly with the Terrified album and the Down to the Bone record. Um, and I think the Rehab record, which sadly was yeah. the last um, Choir Ride recordings with the late, great Kevin Dubrow, uh, that was a phenomenal record. That's one of my favorite records in the Choir Riot catalog. Um, but, you know, the thing about Choir Riot is, and, you know, Kevin and I always had this discussion, that even in the 90s, when pretty much nobody cared about heavy metal or hard rock bands, uh, we continued to write new material and release uh, new material, basically to please ourselves and to keep moving forward. Uh, because while the fans expect you to play uh, live the songs that they're familiar with, it was important for us to continue creating uh, new music, and that's something that has stuck with me even after Kevin's passing, uh, which is why I continue to uh, to make new records with Choir Riot. All right, so this is what we got going. We got the new album coming out November 8th. We got the new music video coming out, In the Blood, and that premieres November on Friday 25th? The, the 25th. The 25th. What can we expect in that video? A lot of cowboys, right? A lot of cowboy stuff. Well, if, uh, if you're fans of, uh, of spaghetti westerns, you know, um, um, like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, all those Sergio Leone um, films from, from that genre and that era, uh, then you will enjoy it. It's, it's very tongue-in-cheek. I mean, it's still a music video, uh, but, 
you know, um, my wife Regina Benelli uh, wrote and directed it, and she's oh. she's a huge fan of of the spaghetti western genre. And so we didn't want to just make another one of those videos where it's just a performance video or a video in front of a green screen with all sorts of special effects added. We wanted to make something uh, something different and entertaining, and uh, and hopefully everybody will uh, will take it in that spirit and enjoy it. And last but not least the performance at the whiskey that is on it's this week right this weekend yes saturday the uh october 26th very cool are there any are there any other shows scheduled after that well there's two more shows that will probably finish out the year um one is in the st louis area um and the other one is up in uh in northern michigan uh, and I'm actually, uh, I'm actually going to go check with, uh, with my medical team and see if they'll green light me for me to, uh, to do those shows. Uh, they've already green lighted me to go back out on the road in 2020. Um, oh. I just have to really schedule, you know, my treatments so that one does not interfere with the others. But, uh, it's my intention to go straight back out into the saddle in 2020 and uh and we'll see what i can do about the uh the the two remaining shows after the whiskey and you're writing some new material for quiet riot which is amazing yeah it, and you know that's just the, that's just the way i work even before even before um road rage had been released uh i had already started writing material for for what became the hollywood cowboys record um you know my my policy is it's best to do as much as you can on this side of the ground than do absolutely nothing beneath it (laughs) exactly exactly well said do you have any final statements about your health or maybe that was it no, I mean, I think, I think you know, what, what my initial statement, uh, which went public yesterday, uh, pretty much brings everybody up to speed. And I will, of course, you know, update, you know, when, when there's something significant to say. Uh, but other than that, again, I am, I am incredibly humbled by all, the, uh, by all the love and support and prayers and messages that I've received. I, I had no idea that it was going to have that impact. Um, and uh, I'm very grateful to all the fans here in the United States and worldwide because I've received messages from everywhere, from Japan to, to England, um, Germany, Russia, I mean, really all across the planet. Um, so I'm, I'm incredibly humbled, incredibly grateful, and, uh, and you know, uh, I'm fighting the good fight. Frankie, thank you so much for joining me today. And we're going to keep on sending those prayers and positive vibes. I appreciate it, Jimmy. And it's always a pleasure speaking with you. You know, you're a top shelf guy, and, uh, and I really dig that about you. All right, man. Talk soon. Have a nice day.